In this video, we will learn how to use HL7 routing rules in Intersystems Iris for Health. Note that this feature is also in Health Connect, and generic routing rules are similar in Intersystems Iris data platform. Routing engines are rules-based business processes that route messages to particular destinations. As business processes, they sit in the middle area of the production configuration page. The purpose of the routing engine is to determine where a message needs to be sent. It could be sent to one destination, many destinations, or none at all. These processes are most commonly used for routing HL7 messages, but they can be used to route other messages as well. An HL7 routing engine can be added to a production automatically when adding an inbound connection or business service, or it can be added separately using the configuration wizards. The routing engine uses a rule set to decide where a message should be sent, and whether it should be transformed, having its contents manipulated to suit a new message format, before it is sent. Each rule within a rule set is made up of a constraint, a condition, and actions. Constraints check the attributes of a message coming in, while conditions typically look inside the message and route based on the contents. If the conditions and constraints are evaluated as true, then the action is performed. Now let's look at this rule set in the rule editor. If a rule is evaluated as true, and there is a return at the end of that rule, the routing engine will stop processing and will not attempt to evaluate any more rules. If there is no return, the routing engine attempts to match the next rule on the list. In this first example, our first rule does have a return, so that means if it matches that constraint and condition, it will then stop processing and not go on to the next rule. Here the constraint includes the source which is the business service that sent the message to the routing engine. In this case, since we have a dedicated routing engine for each business service, we know all messages coming into the router will come from the same source, so it isn't very important here. We next have the schema, listed as the dot category, which is either an HL7 version 2 version number, like 231, or a custom variant, like here, where we have EMR23. And then we have the doc name, which refers to the message type, in this case, ORMO01. The condition matches on an individual field within the message itself. Some of these are obvious, like MSH6, in that it refers to the sixth field in the MSH segment. Some of the more complex expressions will be explained later. The action part is nearly always the send action, which applies any relevant data transformation before it is sent to the destination. The destination is captured in the target field, so in this case, if we match both the constraint and the condition, we're going to send it to our target, called toProvation. Usually the destination is a business operation or outbound connection, but it could also be another business process. Notice we can also implement Boolean logic into our conditions, like these ands, and we can have multiple actions with different transformations. Now let's create our own rule set. Let's set up this business rule through the business rule wizard. Notice here we have an empty routing rule. The first thing that we want to do is go to the general tab. We then want to specify the production where the rule set will be used, so that later the system gives us only the valid targets within our current production. So let's specify here that we want our production to be my hospital hl7 engine. Going back to the rule set tab, we're going to add a rule. We'll first click on rule set and then click the plus icon to add a new rule. Each rule has a set of constraints and conditions. Constraints match on attributes about the message coming in, while conditions typically look inside the message and route based on contents. By double clicking on the constraints box, we get a wizard where we can specify attributes about the message. Source is the business service from which the message router got its message. The wizard can also allow us to specify the schema. And document name refers to the message type. In our example, ADTA01. If we need to route based on the contents, we need to specify at least the schema and the message type. A condition can then be added by double-clicking on the condition field. From this wizard, it's a bit easier for us to specify the conditions we will route on. To match on an HL7 message field, start typing hl7.curlybrace. Since you have specified the schema and the message type in the constraints, the wizard will give the possible paths and fields. Let's look at the patient's given name, which is within 
PID patient name. Using the pre-built functions and operations buttons at the top, you can create more complicated conditions. Let's use f of x, the function button, to say that we want the given name to start with j. Once we have our rule the way we want it, we can click OK. The last thing we need to add is the action, which determines what will happen if the rule constraint matches and the condition is true. The main thing we want to do is send the message somewhere, so we'll click on when, plus sign, and send. In this case, we want to specify the target as to lab and click OK. We can add a second send action and also send the message to to billing. Alternatively, we could have simply selected both targets here to have the message go to both places. Having them separate, however, allows us to choose two different transforms for these send actions. We can add more rules to the rule set by selecting Rule Set and then clicking Add. You may have many rules depending upon the complexity of your requirements. Whenever you change the rule set, you must save the changes by clicking the Save button. One last feature to be aware of here is the ability to test your rule set without actually sending a message through your production. You can do this from the Test tab in the Rule Editor. The Production Source for Test field allows you to test a rule's constraint based on the source of the message. In this field, you can specify a particular business host in the production that would send a test message. Pressing Select will give you a choice of the components that can be tested. As for the Context Document Object field, you can specify the contents of your test message in one of three ways. User input, or pasting the raw content of a message into the test tool, providing the document body ID of an existing message in your system, or providing the message header ID of an existing message in your system. In our example, we'll paste in a sample HL7 message. We will click Data Form, select our HL7 message class, and paste in the contents. By running the test, we can see how the sample message would have passed through our rule set. Returning to the production configuration page, we need to make sure that we change our business rule name to be the new rule that we created, then click Apply. Now if we click on the circle next to From Application X Router, you can now see that From Application X Router is sending a message to both ToBilling and ToLab. Hopefully this has been a helpful overview of HL7 routing rules. Remember that while this demo used InterSystems Iris for Health, the same features exist in HealthConnect and similar concepts apply in InterSystems Iris data platform.